This video illustrates the tools, considerations, and steps involved in installing the Deco Timing Belt Component Kit 95294K1 on a 1998 Ford Contour with a 2-liter engine, which features variable valve control timing. Additional Deco Kits The kit includes timing belt number 95294, one tensioner, and two backside idler pulleys. As usual, instructions are included in the kit, which also includes a reference to the Ford Technical Service Bulletin, number 99-25-4. These instructions should be followed exactly. According to the Auto Data Sheet, number 84088A3, the tools needed are a number 303.465 crankshaft alignment tool, and a number 303.574 crankshaft top dead center alignment pin. These two tools are included in the AS4654 toolkit from Baum Tools, which is specifically designed for the 2 liter and other engines on Ford, Mercury, and Mazda models. The kit includes three additional tools not needed for this application. The camshaft sprocket holding tool can be bought from Ford or fabricated. This one has been fabricated at the Deco Technical Center in Springfield, Missouri. You'll need a 1-inch open-end wrench for the camshaft and a socket wrench with various hex and torque sockets plus a breaker bar or Deco belt tool for the accessory drive tensioner. You'll also need a jack and jack stand to support the engine during this process since engine mounts need to be removed. For safety's sake, the keys should be removed from the ignition and the positive battery cable should be disconnected. Once the car is securely on jack stands, remove the passenger side wheel and the two splash guards around the front axle. This will allow access to the accessory drive tensioner and the crankshaft pulley. Before removing the accessory drive belt, use a permanent marker to indicate the direction of rotation so that the belt can be replaced later with the same rotation. Engage a breaker bar onto the tensioner pulley bolt and push downward to relieve tension on the belt. Then remove the belt from any flat idler pulley in the system. Release the pressure and remove the tool. Next, remove the belt. Back on top, remove the bolt from the power steering hose bracket and disconnect the ground wire. Next, drain the coolant from the fill tank, remove the bolts, disconnect the hose, and remove the tank. The next job is to remove the motor mount. Unthread the two large bolts holding it to the strut tower and the two large 18 millimeter nuts that connect it to the engine. The motor mount can then be lifted out. It's now possible to remove the top section of the timing drive cover, which covers the camshaft sprockets. At the same time, the air filter can optionally be removed to provide more working room. If done, be sure to stuff a rag into the throat of the air intake to prevent debris from entering. It is now much easier to remove the serpentine belt from the rest of the accessory drive. An F-tool designed for this purpose is handy if available. Once we have moved or removed various engine elements out of the way, we can concentrate on preparing the engine for removal of the old timing belt. You can now clearly see the intake cam sprocket on the left and the exhaust cam sprocket on the right. The variable valve timing control can be seen on the exhaust sprocket. Next, remove the bolts that hold down the plastic cover protecting the spark plug wires. With the cover tilted up, the spark plug wires are visible, along with a cam sensor with a wiring harness. After unplugging the wiring harness, Release the docking station attachment bar and place the cover out of the way. 
Now you're ready to remove the spark plug wires from the engine. Next, remove the bolts that are holding on the camshaft cover. Before removing the cover, notice that the cam sensor will remain attached to the head and the cover pulls off around it. Remove the cam cover and its gasket from the engine. Since the engine will be turned over during this procedure, the spark plug should be removed to prevent compression within the cylinders. Let's refer to the instruction sheet for a minute. Here's the detail of the crankshaft pulley alignment notch, showing how it should align with the left edge of the clocking mark boss on the engine block. The crankshaft should always be rotated in the running direction. This pin from the toolkit will be inserted through the front of the engine block into the crankshaft to hold it at absolute top dead center during our procedure. Next, in the wheel well, here is a white line that has been drawn at the testimonial spot that Ford has applied to the crankshaft pulley for alignment. Notice that it lines up exactly with the clocking mark boss on the engine block. Use a half inch drive socket wrench with an 18 millimeter socket to rotate the crankshaft when needed. Now it's time to insert the alignment pin into the crankshaft. First, remove the plug from the side of the engine block. The pin will be inserted by reaching down between the upper radiator hose and the exhaust shield and threading it into the engine block. Here's a shot of the installed pin right under the crankshaft sensor. To lock the camshafts into their correct alignments, the alignment bar from the tool kit must slide into the slots in the back of the camshafts that have been milled in at their phasing angles. Since the crankshaft is locked at top dead center, the camshaft should be very close to perfect alignment. If necessary, the exhaust shaft has a hex section that will accept a one inch open end box wrench. Using this wrench, Gently turn the cam until the alignment bar slips into the slots. Tighten the camshaft bolt, making sure you don't lose the position of the belt and sprocket. Back down in the wheel well, use an impact wrench to remove the bolt from the camshaft pulley. Then remove the pulley to reveal the camshaft sprocket. Note that the top of the sprocket has the word front stamped in and the keyway is at 12 o'clock when the crankshaft is at top dead center. The next steps in the engine compartment will be to remove the engine mount and the second of three covers. To provide a little more working room, the next step is to remove a backside idler that is part of the accessory drive system. Simply loosen the bolt and remove the idler. One of the details not mentioned in the instructions is that the water pump pulley must be removed from the water pump. Without this removal, there is no access to the bolt that holds part of the bracketry for the motor mount. This bolt is a recessed Torx Allen style bolt. Use a T50 Torx to remove it. On the left side of the motor mount, there is a similar but longer bolt that should be removed. Make a note that the longer bolt is on the left side. Once both bolts have been removed, the motor mount, which also comprises the center timing cover, can be easily removed. The straight center spans of the belt run through the parallel tunnels in the bracket. There is no sign of belt contact in these areas. Back in the wheel well, remove the two bolts from the lower section of the timing cover and remove it to give complete access to the timing belt. Just above the crankshaft pulley on the right side is a backside idler that is smaller than the top idler. As the instructions mention, some models do not have this idler. The entire timing belt routing can now be observed. This is the tensioner. Above that, the intake sprocket on the left. And the exhaust sprocket on the right. A backside idler under that. And the belt leading down to the crankshaft pulley and back. The first step in removing the old belt is to loosen the bolts on the camshaft sprockets. 
the instructions specifically mention that an open end wrench should be engaged on the hex area of the exhaust camshaft to support the shaft while breaking the bolts free. Do not remove the bolts, just loosen slightly. Next, the bolt on the eccentric tensioner pulley should be loosened so that the pulley can be rotated to relieve the tension from the belt. Once the tension has been released, the belt can be removed from the engine. A quick examination of the belt shows no sign of imminent failure, even though the belt is well past its service life. Continue to unthread the tensioner bolt and remove the tensioner. Notice the bent tab near the top of the tensioner. This fits into a socketed chamber in the cylinder head to ensure correct indexing. The correct placement of this tab is critical when installing the new tensioner. Using a T50 Torx, remove the bolt from the top idler pulley and remove it. Notice that bolt is recessed and the pulley has a built-in offset. This pulley was very near the end of its service life, with excessive free rock and no grease left in the bearings. Strong testimony to replacing all the hardware along with the belt on timing drives. The lower idler pulley can be removed from either the top side or from the wheel well. As before, a Torx T50 is used. Notice the extensive concave wear on the surface of the pulley. Also, there is no grease left in the bearings and the seal is burnt up. This pulley was poised for failure. As mentioned earlier, it is very important to make sure the camshaft sprocket bolts are loose before installing the new belt, so that the sprockets can spin freely during the belt installation. The exhaust sprocket has a dome-shaped button bolt plug on the outside of the variable valve timing assembly. Remove this button bolt to access the pulley bolt. The camshaft end and the mating sprocket surface are tapered for a tight fit. The first new component to be installed is the lower idler pulley included in the Deco kit. It comes with its own spacer and bolt. Likewise, install the new upper idler pulley. Next comes the installation of the new tensioner. Here's a close-up of the window slot into which the alignment tab on the new tensioner must seat. This is the new tensioner. During initial installation, it must be rotated so that the narrowest segment of the eccentric pulley is facing toward the belt, thereby providing the least tension. Install the bolt, but do not tighten. Once the belt has been installed, the tensioner will be rotated to the correct position and tension. Before installing the new belt, check to make sure that the crankshaft is rotated clockwise against the crankshaft pin that has been inserted into the engine block. This assures that the crankshaft is indexed exactly at top dead center. Also, double check that the sprockets can freely rotate and the alignment bar is still snugly in the slots of the two camshafts. On the new belt, notice the marking, do not crimp. You should never put a sharp bend in the belt. This can damage the cord in the belt, leading to early failure. Place the new belt around the crankshaft sprocket tensioner, and backside idlers, and start it around the camshaft sprockets which are free to rotate. Gently work the belt onto the sprockets evenly, going from side to side to match the progress of the belt on both sides. If the belt is forced on or goes on unevenly, the sprocket teeth can cut into a belt tooth, thereby damaging the belt fabric. Now it's time to finish the tensioner installation. Insert and tighten the tensioner bolt to finger tight. Insert a 6mm Allen wrench into the hex hole on the front of the tensioner. Also reach behind the tensioner and rotate the bent index tab so that it slides into the indexing window we highlighted earlier. Also check again that the cam sprockets can freely rotate. Prior to final tensioning, the system should have a radial float so that perfect timing is achieved once the tensioner is set. The tensioner will be rotated in a counterclockwise direction, as indicated by the arrow. Using the old tensioner for illustration, 
the movable indexing notch on the tensioner should line up with the indexing line on the alignment tab that is in the stationary alignment window slot on the engine. The line should be centered in the notch for the final tensioner installation. Rotate the tensioner counterclockwise with the Allen wrench. When the alignment notch is centered on the indexing line, tighten the anchor bolt with a socket wrench. Next, torque the bolt to 18 foot-pounds. Best practice would be to maintain the alignment with the Allen wrench while applying the torque. Now that the belt installation is done, the next step is to tighten the cam sprockets back onto their respective camshafts. As seen in the technical service bulletin, this requires a special tool for the intake sprocket only. As indicated on the instructions, Ford makes this tool available as part number T74P-6256-B. For this demonstration, we'll use this similar tool shown earlier. The Allen head screws will fit into the spokes of the sprocket to keep it stationary. The center hole provides access to the anchoring bolt. Now we'll continue with the procedures on the instructions. Here is the tool applied to the intake sprocket to keep it from rotating and the torque wrench engaged in the anchor bolt. This bolt should be torqued to 50 foot-pounds. The exhaust camshaft sprocket is held in place during torquing by an open end wrench on the hex segment of the camshaft, while the torque wrench is applied to the anchor bolt. Torque this bolt to 44 foot-pounds for the 1998 application, or 88 foot-pounds for 1999 and newer applications. Now remove the crankshaft timing pin from the engine block and the alignment bar from the slots in the back of the two crankshafts. At this point, the exhaust cam sprocket anchor bolt should be retorqued to 44 or 88 foot-pounds as just mentioned, again holding the hex area of the camshaft with an open-end wrench. After the exhaust camshaft anchor bolt has received its final torque adjustment, a new plug and O-ring should be installed over the bolt. Next, rotate the crankshaft two complete revolutions if you're very sure that you remove the crankshaft alignment pin to bring it back to the compression stroke on the first cylinder and top dead center. Just before reaching top dead center, reinsert the crankshaft alignment pin. Now rotate the crankshaft the final few degrees to bring it to a positive stop against the pin. Check to see if the alignment bar will still fit into the slots in the rear of the two camshafts. In our situation, the intake camshaft lines up perfectly, and the exhaust camshaft needs just a small adjustment of less than a degree, which is considered acceptable. Since the alignment bar fits, the project is considered a success. This is an excellent time to remove the alignment bar from the crankshafts and the alignment pin from the engine block. If the pin is left in the engine block and you try to start the engine, major damage will occur. After taking the pin out, replace the original plug in the engine block. Finish up by putting the valve cover back in place. Reinstall the spark plugs and wires along with the timing covers, accessory drive, fill tank, splash guards, and wheel. And don't forget the battery.